and you have just crossed the line. End of debate. Report to the cargo bay and remain there until this is over. Is that understood? I know. Okay, I got three things to say. Miss Matinga, we're limited to 45 minutes because the Zoom AI bitch is fucking me over. I do want to see that Rafi video. Two, energy up, energy up, energy up. Three, I just got a text from the electrician <gasps> with oh. the piece that he's hanging out with on Long Island. Oh. Whatever. Well, listen, you want a honey, you don't want that 75 year old piece. <laughs> honey, <laughs> honey, increase the piece. He is 75. Is there honey, a delay? Honey, I you, you what I would prefer Christopher make piece from meatballs. Okay, so ooh, that's a dusty yeah. reference. Wasn't that like a deep cut? Thank Girl, that's you. Your new drag name, Dusty Reference. Dusty reference, hi. She's got uh, the classics. Okay. Energy up, energy up, energy up. Woo and we're yes. about to give a recap. Yeah. So when we yes. left off. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. oh yes so so uh uh you know the uh, balana the captain and tuvok have infiltrated this board cube and they are on a mission but we don't have all the details yet because well aren't they trying to get into the central plexus the central and release plexus. the virus and release the coronavirus yeah right ladies Ladies. Was that revealed in the previous episode? It's a yes. blur. Summer yeah. has wiped my mind clean. Yes, but clean. apparently the the, the clean doctor is not the term I think of when I think of your mind. Well, it's friend. wiped. Let's just <laughs> okay. say, wiped. yeah, wiped. Yeah. I absolutely think yeah. of you when I hear oh my that God. term. Yes, wiped. Yes, totally. I do, oh, you said wiped. I thought you said white. I was like, hello. Excuse you. Why? <laughs> <laughs> like why? But the doctor, of course, has figured out some sort of way to counteract assimilation so that they retain their individuality even after they have been assimilated. So, right. they, you know, the, the queen thinks that she's like, ah, I got you. But no, they are still individuals except Tuvok. He's hearing, you know, he's, he's hearing the hive. You're the collective. Right. And, it's, and it's seductive. He's, because he's hearing the siren call. But they're trying to download this virus into the central plexus yes. to infect the drones that are like sleepwalking in Unimatrix Zero to cause them to be able to be conscious. Cognizant. Cognizant. To when retain back, their individuality. Which when I they have wake not up, been able to do right. Yes. Okay. Yes. By the way, the central plexus sounds like some cheap exercise equipment you buy, like on the home shopping network, mm -hmm. that it gets to your house and it does not. Honey, this central plexus is a piece of shit. It's not working. My thought. It's not working. Yes. Your friend is like, honey, I could have told you it wasn't going to work. It's 1999. So, Dan, what do you think of their plan? Dan. 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 <laughs> Dan. <laughs> I think I've missed the hell out of all of you. Like, I just, I just Welcome back, Dan. I, I get filled with just these like purple hearts of gay joy every time oh. I spend time with you. It's just wonderful. Well, if you do a hit of poppers, it may come flying it out. Trust. <laughs> I, the feeling is mutual. Yeah. I save that for after we're done and I'm hey. it. When I watch the episode after you've edited it, half of the time I'm a little loopy. Mm. Um, yeah. So the plan, I think, is an interesting one because it allows them, to, it allows Janeway to do what she does best, which is stick her nose in to other societies and the way they do things yes. and impose Federation values. So it's like, cool, okay. But in a way that looks like, hey, listen, I'm just going to give them the choice. And if they want, if they choose to reclaim their old lives, they will have the ability to make that choice. So it was like, okay, clever. She could have just gone in and said, listen, like they have been abducted. They're prisoners. They're, they are basically prisoners and yeah. I'm going to liberate them. A lot of them are, are former Starfleet people, are Federation people. Like she knows that no one voluntarily joins up for the board. Right. So she right. could have just said, listen, it's time to finally free all of these prisoners and had she done that i think the moments that follow where the threat from the queen is that i'll just keep killing all of them 
Mm. And unless you tell me which ones are the ones that are a threat to me, I'm going to keep killing all of them. And in that moment, had she framed it as, look, these are all prisoners of war and we are trying to save them, then those threats from the queen would have been really scary. Like, but as it is, the way the episode plays, tell me if you guys agree, I kind of felt like you're threatening to destroy the greatest threat to the Federation. Yeah. In an attempt to sway me to say, no, 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 please, we need as many board cubes out there as possible. Yeah. It's kind of a strange threat. Mm-hmm. It takes the sting out of out of that particular threat. And uh, and also you notice that Janeway, you know, she you could tell like she's feeling a little guilt, but like she's like, she's like, whatever. You're gonna have to destroy every cube. Yeah. Because right. Janeway, lest we forget, is gangsta. Right. Mm. Yeah. She, she is, is gangsta. Good. Shane looked too gangster with that bald cap, though. Oh, she was looking busted. And why did they give her just a little tiny bit of like nappy hair, like a couple strings? No. Like, yes. And she wasn't looking beautiful tonight. It's like watch, like she just has like maybe like maybe like fourteen, like just like just sticking up this way. I'm like, yo, just to like make her look super bad. Maybe with some kind of like fiber optics or some shit. No, it was just some weird hair. I mean, Tuvok is looking too in and balana has got the ridges anyway. But, but let's get yo, into Balana for a second, busted. though. Balana with that sub vocal processor shit they did to her. The primary access port. I think it's isolated from the main power grid. I was here for her raspy griddle cheese voice. I was yes. love it was snap, crackle, and pop. It worked for her. Balana was kicking ass. She, honey, she's kicking clocked ass. One of those Borg later in the episode. She Bang. wailed Bang. on him. <laughs> Don't yeah. fuck with this bitch. But she wasn't a match for Tuvok, which I thought was interesting because Vulcans are three times stronger than humans and Klingons, I'm not sure how much stronger than humans they are, but they're pretty fr- strong. So it should have been more evenly matched, but like Tuver- Tuvok takes her out really quick. But I do want to say that I thought to myself- With a smack. Did, with a little smack. And, but I did think to myself, why did they never do a gay-centered porn uh, a, a Borg gay-centered porn called Assimilated. Hmm. Right? How do you know that they haven't? That would have happened? been so lovely. Yeah. Assimilated. I'm going to go ahead and uh, jot that down. Yes, That's please. a good one. <laughs> I'll make a call. I'll make a call. Men.com. Hey. Does that sound good to everybody? Yeah, we'll yeah. call yeah. men.com. Yeah. Booty yeah, Matrix exactly. Zero, honey. Miss Chichi, Le- well, adjunct, you miss, Ch- miss Chichi LaRue will give her a call. She'll be like, she'll yeah. on that shit. She but, on yeah. it. Yeah. She on it. Um, yeah, so. Two- oh, and also I just want to say, I wasn't feeling Seven's very, very standard purple top in the Unimatrix uh, uh, and her, thing. And her Claire's accessories. It's like, girl, like, did they take you to Kohl's? Bitch. What the hell? Honey, that somebody shopped strawberry basic. today. Somebody did. Well, okay, <laughs> let's talk about Seven. So Seven is in her fully human form. Oh, now her boyfriend, her mate, Axum, Some- Mark Excellent. Deacons. What do you I think did, of him? Well, as I said before, I, I think he's absolutely the most unerotic creature I've ever seen uh, next to whoever played the wife on Everybody Loves Raymond because I just hate her. Oh, I love her. Oh my yeah, God, she's a, a horrible no, conservative no. cunt. Is she? Oh, she's, I, she's a Republican. Yes, she oh, is. Oh, I hate to hear that. But she, you know, but, no, but she was good on the show, but yeah. loved her on the show. Anyway. Loved her on the show. So, but what I was going to say was, Mark Deacons, I did a little digging. Anthony, you had brought up a concept the other day, and it turns out that Mark Deacons is a nullo. He's had his genitals removed. What? Are you serious? Yes. And he's complete. He has a smooth pubic mound like a Barbie doll. Wait That's a, a minute. <laughs> I don't believe you, honey. <laughs> I was about to Google that shit. I was about he's to Google nullo. that. Honey, I had Google, my phone ready. Google, like, Google Nullo, N-U-L-L-O, which by the way heart, also my, sounds like a caramel filled candy bar. My heart, my heart just jumped into my little tablets. Yeah. But yeah. doesn't but doesn't he seem like a Nullo? I think he's adorbs, but uh, Nullos, Nullos are a real thing. Nullos are a real thing. Oh, but and you're I thinking think Neko. And uh, uh, Neko wafers. Yeah. And that's a, and it's also like bleeds thing. into the into the all tubs, but that's not very Talk about science fiction. Honey, take this Nullo wafer. Your balls will fall off. Yeah. Girl, look, they identify yeah. as eunuchs. 
Yeah, but that? I actually, uh, but I actually, oh a my unit, God, Dan is gasping. <laughs> a unit, I am, I am, <laughs> because you know what? Every time I hang out with you guys, I learn all sorts of new, fascinating gay things. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know I was going to learn about this too. Marla yeah. Deacons like, is a Nello. Oh my God! Now, now, listen. I'm not going to say like, gays in space loves everybody yeah everybody and yeah. every new segment of people mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. how people identify oh, is fascinating to me and is amazing and i love it and i want to bring everybody in it's just that every time i learn about another segment part of me is like son of a bitch why didn't i know about this sooner yep. because yep. that's another group of people now out there who feel completely unseen and unheard in gays in space and gays in space is yeah everyone feel that right so it's like son of a bitch i missed another group listen yeah if you see mark deacons at one of these conventions how do you spell his name mark like M-A-R-K. mark <laughs> <laughs> and deacons, not like a deacon in a pastor in a D-E-A-K-I-N-S. church. D e a k i n s. He's a nullo, darling. And I think wait, wait, wait. Well, let's clarify here. He yes. is not a nullo. You're kidding. He he's. Am I? You no, you're kidding. You're I don't kidding. know. Am Michael, I? you are kidding. No, I was outraged yes. because I was like, Jerry Ryan is so gorgeous and so fabulous. Can't they cast her against an actor that has genitals, male listen, or female? Because we know listen, that seven and nine goes each and I, every way. Do you know what? Like, listen, just a little bit. I follow this little uh, um, uh, OnlyFans guy on Twitter, and I have his OnlyFans, and he is Nullo. You know that Nullo, it's not like like a, a way station on the road to transitioning. No, that's it's Caramello. Not, they, that's Caramello. Yeah, you see, but the, it's like they are still guys. They are still guys, but they have chosen to just use the their booty hole. The, yeah, the booty, and then that, that's the focus. And then they, you know, of course, after they're nullo, they have to take uh, <laughs> uh, male hormones and stuff. But like this guy is still a guy. He's a beautiful guy. He's a sexy guy. He's still a guy. Your your genitalia does not define your sexuality, but it can define thing, your weekend. Oh God, yes. Yeah, Look, it can I, ruin I, your it can ruin your weekends. Listen, I'm not trying to come down on the nul, on the nullos, mostly because I can't find it. I, but I, also, um, no, listen, here's my that's, thing. That's what you say when they pull down their pants. You, you're like, wait a minute, I can't, I can't find it. it. Like every time I see what? a nullo and they pull down, I'm like, smooth operator. Was, there, was that a Necco wafer? Oh my smooth god. Smooth operator. <laughs> okay, listen. Back let's, to Voyager. Back, yeah. let's get back to Voyager. So yes. Yes. seven. <laughs> I, I, I need, I'm sorry, I need a minute. I need. Ah, <laughs> she breaks out the fan. Ooh, yes. Available on gazeinspace.org. That's right. Ooh. Yes. Okay. Those custom made gaze in space fans, darling. Yes. yes. Please and, go get yourself one. And Nullos, Nullos are welcome to have them as well. Absolutely. And, absolutely. And we welcome, as does Trek and Gaze in Space, we welcome every iteration of the human of spectrum. Human, alien, sexuality uh uh gender non-binary the whole thing the whole quilt bag honey mahu two-spirit y'all carry on i don't want you in the same room word but word. No, no, no but of course we accept it <laughs> we accept it all and, and you know what there's 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 beauty in 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 the difference in but the difference. we don't accept seven's outfit so she's there no in Unimatrix it's Zero. too plain too and plain she runs into um what's his name kapla karaf Karak. 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 Karak roughing stuff with his Afro puff. And yes. he's like, oh, bitch, you looking for your mate. And she's like, he ain't my mate, Klingon trash. So he I got a man. Up. That's ain't what happens. So what happens? <laughs> Karak was sharpening his tooth. She interrupted him. He <laughs> yes. got pissed. Thought he could take her down, and she kicked his ass. I mean, that's a big rock. Pretty much. A big rock, yeah. Pretty much. The so thing she, was, the actor walked up to Jerry by the by the craft service table, and that's where she beat his ass. Yeah. She was like, she was like, listen, I don't talk to extras. <gasps> she was daintily eating Doritos. Doritos, yes. She was so like, hey, intimidatingly. Rah. Speaking from experience, Dan. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yep. Yep. <laughs> So she's yeah. there in Unimatrix Zero, which is a safe space for the drones that have some kind of, you know, walking, sleeping, mutation. ambient, mutation life. It's, a, and, it's like some type of glitch. 
and that has allowed them to experience their previous individuality. Right. And she's trying to pretend that she's not looking for Mark Deacons, but Lord knows she is. And because they he, had had a prior relationship. Right. When prior, she was still a boy. They used to go shopping. They had had a biological together. relationship, yeah. honey. Because, you, you know what? This? Sometimes you want a space washer. And a yeah, space look at how, look at that, And a space drawer. Look at yeah. that adorable, adorable actor. He's not you bad. could buy his left testicle on eBay. <sighs> okay, look, bitch. Is it still available? I don't want to know. Why, why, like why are you telling me that? <laughs> Mike Diamond, why are you telling me that as I access my second computer? The right one's on as Etsy. A, okay, right. so <laughs> she's trying to pretend that she's not into him, but she's into him, which brings me to my yeah. least favorite scene in this entire episode and perhaps this entire show. Which scene is that? So the Unimatrix Zero people are being invaded by Borg, actual Borg drones that are coming yes. towards them. And they're doing like Ewok level resistance shit. Yes. Right. Like beating them with flying logs and all Catching this kind of shit. Catching them in vines. And Seven gets caught in a fucking net made out of vines and has to have Nullo cut her out. I yeah. was like, nah. Seven would find her own way out of that busted ass primitive trap. And I found it so sexist. Yeah. So and she's like you? sitting there floating yeah. with a perfect little cutout for her beautiful face. Yeah, nah. the cutout was just in the right place and, and just like, the right space. Yeah, yeah, also totally ripped from Return of the Jedi. She yes. she would have gotten out of the trap in a second, but what you needed that was a writing trap, She'd unfortunately. Be off what they needed was this cute little setup. Like, bring it on, wicket. So they could have like their moment where she, you know, kind of for the, the whole time she's been fighting it, fighting it, fighting it. And then between the doctor's advice, and I must say the, the pretty good advice from 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 Karak, Karak, she sort of realizes, you know what, like, clearly I'm a little bit more emotionally in touch when I'm in this simulation and I cared for this guy. I love the way Picardo was like, Seven, I know you. If you had a relationship with this person, then this must be a person of worth. And it kind of like she sort of remembered. But did you catch that... the narcissism in his comment? Bring it, Dan. Oh my what? God. Loved <laughs> that moment because Picardo is so brilliant, just in general, but the way he can hide the doctor's emotions, which generally yeah. are never hidden. He is so right out there with stuff to watch him in that moment where he says, wow, all that time we were trying to find this part of your personality, which yeah, what he here. really wanted to say was all this time I've been trying to get you to fall in love with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You were already in love with somebody else. Mm -hmm. And he says both things and the way he delivers those lines is so it's equally informative, which is what the doctor is heartbreaking because yeah. the doctor really loves her and wants to be seen as someone that she could be with and on that on a third level a little bit of hologram self-hate like if i was a real boy i was a real I little no we could have been together why and bother Axel isn't all of that well yeah, yeah you know only oh, in, what it's it, only what, in her dreams. What sing Picardo? Sing only, only in my dreams. dreams. <laughs> okay, Booby, the moment's over. All this time we've been trying to develop that aspect of your humanity, and it's been there all along. But what <laughs> what Picardo does, and it's what great actors do, is that like you can deliver the text, but an actor can give you the subtext just with silence with a look of the eye so he delivers the text and the subtext and and you totally get it you totally and at the same time but then at the same time he gives himself a little backdoor brag because he's like well like if you you know if you appreciated this person then he must be a person of worth like yeah. me because he's like, you, you know he's like you're very you appreciate about me who you hang out with that's why yeah. we're such good friends you're very particular about who you choose to spend time with seven no doubt that's why you and I have become friends. 
listen, you know, they, there's always got to be a little hetero, heteronormative, little love moment, stuff like that. I would have loved to have like a, you know, a gay moment back then. Now we have, you know, the doctor on, on discovery and stuff discovery. like that. But you know what? Like when she got that kiss and, and we haven't gotten there, but at the end I was like, yeah, girl, yeah, girl, get you, get, you get yours, man, because I don't know how fulfilled seven of nine is as an individual. I think she's happy to be out of the collective. I think she loves the people on Voyager, but like she's rather emotionally remote. And like, she's like, she cares for people, but she doesn't really, she keeps them at a, at a remove. And, you know, like I was just happy to see someone just give her a kiss and for her to feel something. Yeah, but she, you know? also, she also doesn't really know what she's missing because she hasn't had. Oh, full. for real. I don't know. I don't know if so, one of the smartest people in the entire galaxy doesn't doesn't at least intellectually realize what she is missing because she wants it. Yeah, there's a part of her that clearly wants it. Right. So I loved right. it. I loved it. I think Me I think certainly subconsciously, Annika Hansen knows that she no longer feels the love that she felt from her parents as a young child like subconsciously you that that is missing mm. you know as a borg she ignores it pushes it aside because it's irrelevant but right. once she's given the opportunity to reclaim her humanity suddenly that voice that has been silenced very slowly you can see because you're right she totally wants it that's why she looks yep. to Janeway as a mother figure she's yep. trying to find mm. that that connection to the love that she knows she's missing but then later we find out if she finds it she's gonna die she's she she gonna die too much it's right. like yeah how many and you, times can we screw this poor girl? Like, and God. and the seven of nine that you meet on Picard is still clearly an exemplary example of a woman and and, and capable, but clearly damaged goods. She's she's lived rough, honey. It's been rough on her. Yeah, you know. And let's just. She's already I, been I'm, introduced. I, I I haven't yeah. watched Picard, so you I don't watch Picard. Boo. I know. Oh, honey, your track card gets re revoked. Yeah. No, well, I'm on. Honey. Such, I'm doing the next generation at the moment. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. I know you're working your way through, but right. but you watched Gen Next Gen, didn't you? No. Like when it was first on. No. Really? Are you aren't you gagging at this bitch? I'm gagging I, at this I, bitch. We I, we finished Voyager. Wow. We finished Deep Space Nine, so now we're doing Next Generation, and then we'll do uh, uh, Discovery. So your I first we do your so your first trek was Voyager. Yes. Oh, you wow. started backwards, girl. Let yeah. let her do it the way she won't do it. Do it the way you gonna do it, girl. Is Enterprise worth watching? No. no. Yes. Okay. Oh. 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 Uh, I mean, no. I mean, no. No. no, no. Yeah, that show? <laughs> can, can I still come on the show? Absolutely. Can I still listen, eat lunch with you guys? I, listen, I was okay with Enterprise until what's her name? Tapau takes a sonic shower and oh. give a little bit of heart and then soul. a little bit of Vulcan home. I was like, nah, this is gratuitous. I'm out. Speaking yeah. of, I'm out. Although Miss Tuvok is in there in the Borg cube. Yes. And here's, his neural suppressant is wearing off. In which the quick. reminds me of that magic mushroom I took in July that I'll tell you all about. Woo. His neural suppressant is wearing off. So the Borg Queen is starting to connect with him and he's getting absorbed into the collective. In the city of Tapal, we share your memories. You're part of us now. Not yes. fully. He's reciting facts like, yeah. you know, his daughter's his birthday, birthday and that, you know, Axum is a nullo and just things to bring him back to, to reality. <laughs> yes. But he says, like, yes. Captain, I'm gasping. And if it um, comes yeah. to it, you need to you chop can. me. Right. And yeah. She's like, oh, trust bitch, I will. No, she's like, no, you keep on doing you. Like when the when the when she does realize that he now has been turned. Yeah. Then she is. Trying then to she's going to do it. But she's giving him every chance because she knows, you know, that that she loves she's him. Because like, first mm -hmm. she's like, stay focused. Stay Tuvok. Stay yeah. Fius. Stay focused. Stay Tuvok. That's an order. Tuvix. 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 Miss Tuvix. Miss the honey, the board queen is like, bitch, I will, I will assimilate you back into Tuvix. Back into Tuvix. <laughs> so Tuvok, got, Tuvok is in the collective. 
Balana's off somewhere being Balana with her vocal fry. With her vocal fry. Janeway's yes. taken prisoner, and her and the Borg Queen have this sort of showdown, mm, like a showdown in holographic form, sort of. Yeah. And uh, there's some back and forth, and there's gamesmanship and one upsmanships. And then. And, but wait, let's not brush over the sinister performance by Susanna Thompson. Yes. She is wonderful. It is two great actresses in their prime, like just like these scenes where they're pushing at each other and trying to get information and trying and a little subterfuge. And it's such good acting. And I just think that like, she's really wonderful. She's just as good as oh, Alice Grage. She's yeah. really, really wonderful. But there's like in her coolness and her reserve, there's like such sinister power. And I just, I just want to shout that out. Initiate self-destruct. An effective solution, don't you agree? And she shares yeah. that she was assimilated once. Right. Because yes. she, she was a little girl. So she actually, the Borg Queen goes to Unimatrix Zero. The little boy yeah. kind of yeah. comes upon her. or right. well, in, a, her. in a wonderful scene. In a wonderful scene where she's like, stand up, little boy, comply. And they have this little conversation. A conversation where she sort of wins him over right. little, and even little and Puerto Rican child, little Puerto Rican child comply. Yeah. Little boy and in then, drag. And then at one point, like, you know, she's like, don't you want to see your parents again? And she's like, yeah. Mean. And then she's like, mean. I want mean. And then she's like, she talks about assimilation and he says, but, uh, but what is assimilation? Is it fun? And she just looks at him. She's like, yes, yes, it's, it's fun. fun. Assimilation turns us all into friends. Is that fun? Yes. It's fun. Mama, it's fun. <laughs> okay. It's like, how, honey, it's not fun. How chilling is are those moments, though? Because I feel like I think she's amazing as the board queen. I think Alice yeah. is amazing as the board queen. But Alice has, so I feel, uh, more sinister sexual absolutely vibe to her whereas Susanna absolutely. is a little more sinister cool cult leader yeah. kind of vibe and when she talks yeah. to the kid it's like what child psychology class did you assimilate you know yeah. how to tell this kid like you know what that kid needs to hear to get him to trust you so right. that he will show you around the joint like yep. how how yeah, do you, you know, know that that kid is going to grow up and hire a dominatrix. I'm sorry. Oh my God. He's going to yes. have the ultimate BDSM yes. leather fantasies. And yeah. also when she's like, it's you know, great he scene. says, do you miss your parents? She's like, no, they're with me now. I'm like, yeah. And they're saying now. you're dressed like a whore. Yeah. You're dressed like yeah. a whore, little girl. <laughs> but, oh, and then he's like, oh, come on. I'll show you this, this cliff. You can see the whole forest. Well, you can see the whole forest. No, you can't. You see the ocean looking like a Windows fucking screensaver. I'm sorry. Looking very window screensaver. Yes. Well, you know, the when the scenes between Janeway and the Queen, this is this is one of those moments where in a new Star Trek, we wouldn't ask this question, but given the time and the limitations, do you guys think the decision to recreate the holographic image that she's talking to of Janeway as human Janeway was because time money and kate saying i'm busy enough without having to get here four hours earlier to be made up into a borg if i don't have to yeah. yes that whole line from her saying i know how vain you are about blah, blah, blah. it was like yeah. wow that is the perfect way out of all of that extra time and money mm -hmm. yeah the borg queen ain't interested in assuaging your vanity Right. right. Like, I'm going to go to extra trouble. Yeah. Just to. Well, but she is trying to yeah. convince Janeway to do her bidding. And so... she's playing and she's playing a long game. You're, she is. But like, hmm. I also thought to myself, why not just beam Janeway to this to this, you know, to the central yeah. hub, wherever like, she is. Hmm. Like, why are they having this conversation like this? I just thought it was sort of. Well, bizarre. they can't get through the shields. The shields in Yarnell? 
They, she, she can, they can't get through Shields and Yarnell. They can't, yeah, apparently. What's a Yarnell? What? Shields and Yarnell were a From terrible mime troupe in the 70s that had a television show. And actually, they, they were on an episode of Wonder Woman as well, Shields and Yarnell. Uh, but to <laughs> clearly nobody, I'm the oldest bitch in this room. Is that like mum and shunts? They yeah. were kind of in that moment shunts <laughs> vein. Yeah. She, Booby, you remember Shields and Yarnell. Of course. My mom loved them. In the Wonder Woman episode that has uh, Antecida, the, 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 the one that controls the ants, that's Shields. Uh, that's Shields. Oh, <laughs> Antecida. If that's the name of the episode. It's called Antecida. Or but something. wouldn't Antecida be something like Truvada? <laughs> Let's, well, maybe. Let's hope. Antia. Antecida? Yeah, that, that's it was Ooh. something like that, or, an, wow. or Antifida, okay. Antifida. So, so this is all right. right okay. okay. Well, now that we've okay. killed the energy, I just I just went back to the grid comment, and that's okay. all that's in my head now. All right. Sorry, okay. sorry, sorry, sorry. All okay. right. The actually the episode of Wonder Woman in which Shields and Yarnell uh, appeared is actually called Formicida, Formicida, which is actually what ants are called. It's their right. uh, 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 you know uh, etymological. Genius. Name for me, Sida. Now, is that because ants, some ants can shoot formic acid? Probably. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So formic acid comes into play in this episode because it never, because never the does. Because the boar queen shoots it out of her booty hole out of nowhere, honey. Yes. Creating nullos. When yes. that, when, when that, no, when that, when that Nello drone tries to come for her at right. the ball. <laughs> yeah. She's like, you are chop. I'm serving you formic acid, darling. Darling. Like you that girl. So they get that virus into the central plexus. And what happens is they release all those Borg so that when those Borg wake up, they have retained their individuality. individuality. So in essence, you have created a, um, a fighting force, uh, uh, a, resistance you know, a, a resistance movement instantly of tens of thousands of, of drones. And so, you know, then she starts destroying ships and she's like, I'll destroy every last one of them, no matter what I have to do. And then she's like, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to, the, the board queen says, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to um, destroy, oh no, she has manipulated the virus so that it's going to kill every drone. Right. That is that is that participates in the Unimatrix Zero One simulation, right. and so now things are at a head. And Janeway, who is this thinker, like like this three D chess thinker, she's like, "Oh, you want to play with me like that?" Okay. So in a very coded, guarded message back to the crew, where she's sort of kind of like making the board queen think. I'm just telling them your message. She actually tells Seven, destroy Unimatrix Zero One, because what'll happen is those Borg, those tens of thousands of Borg will no longer have access to Unimatrix Zero One, but they retain their individuality. Hmm. But then of course, now we have to separate Axum uh, and Seven, because Axum is way off in another part of the galaxy. So, but we, we still have to get there. So. Well, and it's also, uh, I know, uh, I'm sorry, Mike, I know this is running long and the last thing you need is for me to bring us back a little earlier, but I'm going to do it. Bring it back, no, bring it, bring it, it, bring it back. There's the point where Seven encounters the queen in uh, the episode Dark Frontier. Yeah. And Seven says, oh, well, you know, that's uh, why you left me alone when I was on Voyager or whatever. And the queen is like, girl, that's why I put you there. Yeah. To become eventually the new better version of Locutus so that she could be used to conquer humanity. But at the same time, Seven of Nine has this very rare genetic to her that allows her to experience Unimatrix Zero. Was yeah. that planned by the Queen so that she could also infiltrate that? Or was that just yet another one in a million chance with this one character, with this one human girl, Annika Hansen? 
it yeah. seems like what do you guys think do you think that was part of the queen's plan like let me get mm. humanity and also knock out this annoying dream world thing no because no, she, no, so. she didn't know about unimatrix zero it's a queen. nice it's a nice thought puzzle but what i think is that annika like janeway and like picard are just truly exceptional examples of human beings. It's and a, so it's they're a, always at the center of shit that needs to happen. Well, it's a chosen one narrative. I don't think it's right, a mistake right. that Annika is an anagram of Anakin. Thank you. The oh. chosen one, darling. Uh, the chosen one, do, darling. Don't bring Star Wars into this, Mary. Darling. Hey. No, darling. No, they did it with the By Ewok the shenanigans earlier. Yes, they did, actually. So listen, this Let's is what happens. Let's wrap it up. Shit's going crazy. Borgs yeah. are going on. Viruses yeah. is battling nanoviruses, and then ships coming Par in. Paris is giving Chakotay lip, and we already know that Chakotay does not, just tolerates Paris. Well, he tolerates him, but they they don't like each other. I think Chicote gave him a spanking. Lieutenant. A first officer could get in a lot of trouble for talking to his captain that way. He's a, you my first officer? Bend over. You better, honey, you better drop those girl, doors. Honey's gonna be one night in Paris. Girl. Honey. Uh-uh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no. Panty shields in your nail, darling. Drop the darling. Doors. <laughs> so anyway, so, but of course, yeah. Paris is trying to get his his sugar boo back. His sugar boo. <laughs> He's trying to get right. his sugar boo back. Right. right. Um. You know, but little does he know that, uh, like, currently in her Borg state, she's actually looking like Sugar Bear from Starsky and Hutch, and sounding like Lauren Bacall, <laughs> and sounding like Lauren Bacall after too many cigarettes right. and too much coffee. and too much high tone coffee. So, Miss Karak who is freed uh, from the collective, he comes in a, in a Borg in a round sphere. A Borg round sphere. Looking very Death Star. Again, yes. Cribbin, Cribbin. Then there's like laser battles and shit. Yes. And then Janeway and Balana and what's left of poor ass Tuvok get beamed back to Voyager. As their ship is being exploded by the Borg Queen. Right, as she blows up, they spot and they ship. And we have to separate our star-crossed lovers who have finally found each other again. And also once again, like sort of, you know, taking the full experience of humanity. She was just about to get there and just taking it back from seven. It's, it's really, it's, it's heartbreaking. But you know what? Someday they will meet again and she can see in person his Barbie doll crotch. So we cut to yes. six. Except, right? except by then, except by then, she has fallen for Rafi. Michelle Heard, right. And I'm sorry, you get yes. a little Rafi in your life. That's you an upgrade. You don't want anything else. Right. Well, you, well, you know what sent her to women was just those two dates that she went on with uh, Chicote. Right. Probably. Yeah. She was like, she like Chicote pulled out like his little weird dream little, finder thing. She's like, and oh, she was, that's a dream catcher. She Why was is like, it moist. She was like, a coochie, no, no. No, no. No, no. no, no. You no. barely coochied my Moya. Barely oh, my God. No, you ain't getting you ain't getting this Moya. Honey, I have reservations. Okay. Oh, oh okay. All right. So, we, cut, da, da, da. so All right. we cut to sick right. bay. One more. Oh, that's, oh that's, that's yes. So there we are in sick bay. The the Borg have gone on their way. The resistance has been sparked. Nullo was off in fluidic space, feeling his smoothness. Yeah. yeah. Then we're in sick but bay. But he's he, like, but he says, I will find you one day. I'm gonna find you. I will I'm find you. I'm gonna find you. He never finds her, unfortunately. He didn't look. He didn't he ain't look. I think I think he looked a little yeah. he got reassimilated. He probably. looked a little fierce. He did. So, <laughs> he did look a little fierce. So Tuvok is gasping, but <laughs> Balana and Janeway are on the mend. Janeway's hair is back. Yes. She's propped up on pillows in sick bay. She's already reading reports. Uh, yes. The doctor's been able to extract most of their Borg stuff, but Tuvok is going to gag for a while. And yeah. Seven comes in for the final scene, which is heartfelt and well acted. We're at the end. And the only way you can end this type of journey, I mean, because think about it, Janeway and Seven, 
they 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 know each other and are a part of each other's lives because Janeway took a Borg and helped her to become human again. Yeah. And through that whole time, there was a part of Janeway who was thinking in the back of her mind, like, you are making this so much more difficult than it needs to be. Just be a freaking human again. Yeah. You know, like, she, she never said it. But come on, we That's like, is it really that hard to embrace the fact that we are not going to control your every move? We're giving you back your life. You're giving us nothing but lip and attitude. Like, yeah. get with it. Now, here we are. Janeway has been assimilated, was a Borg, and has been made human again. And she's like, shit, this really fucking hurts. Yeah. I am, you know, she says to Seven, if I ever belittled how difficult it has been for you to become human again, remind me of today. And that, I think, was such a great moment for their relationship up until that point. The doctor removed my spinal clamps, but it'll be a while before I'm playing hoverball again. If I ever imply it's been easy on you these last few years, remind me about today. Because Janeway, she is always so sure that what she's doing is right and what she's doing is in Seven's best interest. I'm not sure she ever said anything like that to Seven before. And as the student, to have your teacher finally give you a little just a little leeway there to say, I actually do understand that it's been this hard for you. And then at the end of the scene, Seven returns it by saying, if I ever tell you that Axum was just a friend, yeah. remind me of right now. If I ever imply that he was nothing more than a friend, remind me about today. So the Borg way to deal with the fact that she knows in reality she will never see him again would be to just shut it off and say like, nope, didn't feel Not the love, feel. nope, 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 nope. But the fact that she says that to Janeway is, is a nod to Janeway saying, thank you for appreciating my struggle. I now want you to see that your attempt to help me to come back to being human has been successful, mm. even if yeah. I make it seem to you at times that it wasn't. What a beautiful yeah. ending, I thought. Yeah. So, I mean, as two parters go, uh, Unimatrix Zero parts one and two, I think that one was much stronger. You know, the first part of yeah. these cliffhanger things usually are. Um, I liked this episode. I didn't, I, I found myself kind of tuning out a little bit, like, during the back and forth and the plot machinations and, and all of that, I thought the special effects were good. I love the Borg Queen. I thought the music yeah. was great. But overall, I'm going to give this episode two and a half smooth pubic mounds. Two and a half Deacon Nulos. Yeah, Deacon Nulos. Yeah. I don't think it's among the greatest two parters in Star Trek history. But I think for me, I'm going to give it, I, I'm going to give it like a strong three and a half. I oh. did enjoy it very much. And it, it was great performance. True that the second parts always like lose a little bit of steam because we got to finish this up. Right. But I thought it was great. I'm going to give it three and a half Leo LaRue. I'm going to give it a really strong three. Hmm. Okay. Because I, I kind of was dozing off a little bit too. And, you know. Bob made me some lunch and I was just like, I paused it and went and ate. You know, if I was really into it, into an episode, I wouldn't pause it. I'd be like, okay, I'm eating right. lunch later. You would have paused it, but you might cause it. But I yeah. caused it. Wait, did, wait a minute. Are you saying Bob gave you a munch or he made you some lunch? He made me some lunch and then we munched. Okay. Ah. Okay. Yes. Because so, y'all are still in the honeymoon phase. Right. That's ne You're never supposed to have food before sex, though. That's you got to say you got to be hungry. You got to stay yeah. hungry. Well, if you on keto, you always hungry. No, but if I, you're too if you're too hungry, you could get nauseous in the middle and that's never good. No, nah, when you hungry, girl, you taking that shit to the base. You going to eat <laughs> to the star base. You got to stay hungry. Honey. You taking that shit to the base, bitch. His yeah, nuts strong drink. Adam's apple. But Dan, Anything. your feelings? Yeah, yeah Dan. What, what do you uh, mean? Okay, so I, I agree it's not one of 
the best by any stretch of the imaginations of the uh, season finales and, and premieres. But I think because of the doctor's performance in yeah. that scene with Seven and that final scene between Seven and Janeway, I think the special effects were great. They told yeah. the story well and like, yeah, all of that, good, good, well done. But those two scenes from an emotional standpoint, a character standpoint and the acting, for those two alone, I'm going to go with a solid three super gay fans. Hey. Yes. Woo. And his fan just changed color. How did it, that happen? Hello. Damn. Oh, now that's, I that's, wanted to make sure I promoted all three versions. Oh, oh honey. Three, now I've seen a blue one. That's kind of Tuvok yellow. Yes. What's yep. the third version? Command. Red. The okay. Command red. Once again, that's gazeinspace.org. Three A's in gaze, three A's in space. Be sure to like, review, share, subscribe, gag, and stay hungry. This is Mike Diamond. This is Miss Matinga. This is the boobs. And thanks Man. once again. To Dan DV. Gaze in space. Gaze in space. space.